When it's time for an adventure on the open highway, one quick call to American Family Insurance gets you headed in the right direction. Our travel peace of mind package is there if you encounter a bump in the road. From roadside assistance to rental car coverage, we have you covered. Find a local agent or get a quote at AmFam.com. American Family Insurance. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Hey, folks, this is Jason Lewis, the producer of the From the Shadows podcast. I just want to remind you about our website, fromtheshadowspodcast.com. Uh, we have a Facebook page. We would appreciate it if you like and follow. Also, join our discussion group on Facebook called After the Shadows. We have a Twitter feed. Please follow us on Twitter. It can be found with at podcast underscore from. Follow us on Instagram at From the Shadows Podcast. We have a YouTube channel. Go to the search bar of YouTube and put From the Shadows Podcast and please subscribe to that channel. We are also on the Odyssey Radio Network, and we can be found there at odyssey1.com. We are still on the traditional podcatchers that everybody loves to listen to us on. We get a lot of feedback, so please rate the podcast and communicate with uh, whether you're on Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, Apple Podcasts, Podbean, or Google Podcasts. We're there, and we appreciate it when you leave comments for us. We also have a Patreon page. It can be found at www.patreon.com forward slash from the shadows. You can receive books, stickers, coffee mugs, and special content just for our Patreon subscribers. Check it out for yourself and see what packages that we have to offer. Well, that's all I have for you right now, folks. And thanks for being a part of the From the Shadows podcast family. So with that being said, let's get this episode started. Hey, welcome everyone to the From the Shadows podcast. I'm your host, Shane Grove. And sadly, Jason, the super producer, is not with us again. But he, he promises me he will be soon. He's still on the mend. Uh, he still wants to uh, tell everybody thanks for all the well wishes and the prayers. Um, he's uh, slowly getting better. Uh, but behind the scenes, uh, one of our good friends, Jason and I's good friends, Phil, is um, he's going to start doing some production work and kind of helping helping out me and the Howler, who still can't figure out how to put theme music in the front or back of the episodes and clean up the audio. So we thank everybody that has uh, bore with us these last seven or eight painful episodes where our, uh, uh, it's just been bare bone recordings getting put up. So we appreciate you know everybody listening, um, and we will get much better soon. So um, with that being said, I have a really cool guest on today, this week's uh, episode, and not just because he is a fellow male slinger and <laughs> and okay I, I can only us us people that employed at the united states postal service can are the ones that can call each other male slingers it's kind of you know it's kind of a perk of the job it's right. one of the one of the few perks of the job so 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 <laughs> join so joining me um also from the great state of ohio is mailman slash author Scott Donnelly. Scott, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I am thrilled to be a part of your show. Ooh, we may have to edit that out. That didn't you didn't sound like you were all that <laughs> thrilled, but but I can tell. I can tell. It's it's you know, it's kind of late while we're recording this, and you know, it's been it's probably for both of us it was a long day on the job. Long day. Yeah. Long day. No, I, it's uh, I I am very excited. I I I appreciate the uh, the time on the show and um, getting to know you guys. Yes, well we we definitely appreciate it. And and what I think um, we're going to talk about tonight is is and I have to admit this cryptid this subject 
always leaves me scratching my head. This is the one, this is the one cryptid that I, I have had trouble wrapping my arms around and making sense of, but we're going to, we're talking about the one and only Mothman. Yes. Yes. Mothman. Yes. Now, now I'm going to, now I'm going to let everybody know now. So Scott wrote a book. It's called the, this is the, the main uh, subject of our discussion. It's called Mothman Return to Point Pleasant, right? That's the name, that's the name right. of the book. Okay. Yep. Now it is a, how would you label it, a horror fiction book? Yeah, I would say, I would say it's definitely horror fiction, um, cryptid fiction. Um, yeah, a fictional story based around, uh, and including some of the real life events. Yeah. And, and like I said, you know, you sent me a copy and I sat down and started, you know, I just started reading this afternoon cause I wanted to have at least some of it done. And next thing you know, I was 40 pages into it and I'm not very smart. So <laughs> for me to be able to sit down and read, uh, that they, I mean, it was a great, it was a great quick read, which I don't want it to sound like, oh, you know, it's not, it, it's just, it's very, uh, you know, it kind of breezes through what's happening, which I think people like, they don't mm -hmm. want to be bogged down with a 500 page volume on, you know, we want to have some fun and it right. doesn't take long to have some fun in this book. So, so yeah. before we really get it, like, so tell, let's talk, tell the audience, cause I'm assuming you've done a, a lot of research on the subject of the Mothman mm -hmm. for those who don't really, you know, don't really know what the Mothman is like, tell the, if you could tell some of the events that led to, um, probably one of the biggest disasters of that time, the right. silver bridge collapsing and the Mothman kind of disappearing. So, right. Um, um, yeah, so uh, it, it helps that I had a, a strong fascination with Mothman before I started writing the book anyway. Um, but with all the extra measures I took with with research. Um, yeah, so uh, in starting in uh, the fall of 1966, uh, people in Point Pleasant, West Virginia um, started seeing some weird things. Uh, they described... Uh, a creature um that would that was tall it had wings was black and uh the two red eyes seemed to be the most prominent feature um and this thing was reported many times over the next year um and it ultimately uh leading up to the in December of 1967, the Silver Bridge in West Virginia that connects West Virginia to Ohio actually collapsed, um, kind of bringing to an end this year-long stressful time with, with this thing that kept uh, popping up all over town. Um, and to my knowledge, it was never seen in Point Pleasant again after that, which led a lot of people to connect the two um, with you know, was the Mothman there to warn of this bridge collapse and then his job was done? Or was he there to potentially cause the disaster and then vanished and never returned after that? Um, it's a very fascinating uh, cryptid in Point Pleasant. I had the, the pleasure of, of going there myself and it's such a interesting place with a, a, a rich history. Um, it, it just, all of it together just makes for a very unsettling story, no matter what side of it you might fall on. And, well, and, and you and I kind of talked about this when we first, uh, we first were discussing is if anybody out there has not been to point pleasant and you can go, I strongly urge just, drive across the bridge that's there now or you know wherever you know if you're on the on the right side you know <laughs> just drive in the town and and just kind of go downtown park your car and just walk around a little bit right because i'm telling you the, the time i stopped there 
it was about five o'clock on a Friday and it just seemed it was so odd. Okay. F five o'clock on a Friday, any other town in America is hustle and bustle people closing up, getting ready for the weekend, you know, you know, but there's people all around. There's nobody in downtown point. Now, maybe it's just because I was there and they were trying to stay away <laughs> from me, but but I just, I, I, it was such an eerie feeling. And I mean, it's not because you, cause I had no, uh, like I couldn't stand where I, where I was looking. Like I didn't know where the silver bridge was. I didn't know, um, you know, where some of the points of historical significance were from where I was standing. It's just, I knew that standing there, it kind of felt a little heavy and yeah. I couldn't put my finger on why it felt like that. Like, so, and I know you went there and you guys kind of like looked around, like, what did you think uh, walking around there and kind of exploring, um, exploring the place a little bit? Right. Yeah. My brother and I went there in the mid two thousands together just to check the whole place out. Cause we were fascinated back then. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a, kind of want to describe it as like something out of a twilight zone episode, but you know, I don't, I don't, it, it's the perfect setting for, for something, you know, you got the small town, quiet, small town, some eerie monster and uh, a devastating disaster. It's the perfect setting for a story like this. Um, I just yeah I, I agree I agree and what I wonder is is does did this did Point Pleasant feel that way before and this is just how it this is how or is that a result of an imprint from the disaster that happened and then you know maybe the hysteria leading up to the to the disaster like I've often wondered if it was just a place that just felt that way and that you knew a disaster was going to happen. Right, like if it felt that way or after that, just the um, yeah. mainstream knowledge of the town playing more of a role in, in people's minds and, and views on it. Now, so so what attracted you most to the Mothman? Uh, well, I, I used to get this book out of the library um, I think it was called the North American Field Guide to Monsters. Um, and the the sketch of the Mothman in that book always drew drew me in because it was so eerie. Um, and then not long after that is when the Mothman Prophecies movie came out, and we went to go see that. And it was such a such a eerie movie. It's, I still love it to this day. Um, and you know, you, you tossed in Bigfoot and Loch Ness Monster. All this stuff is so fascinating. Whether or not it's real or you believe in it, it's it's just fascinating material to read about. Um, and the Mothman was just always one that that really ranked high with my interests with with cryptids. Now, I mean, so here's the thing: is you know, we we always talk about you know. Bigfoot's the rock star, you right. know. So why not Bigfoot? Oh, Bigfoot, he'd be number two. <laughs> he'd, be, he'd be number two. <laughs> Bigfoot be number two. I love uh, Bigfoot. Is another fascinating. Bigfoot is one. If you were to list out all the cryptids, and and I were to pick out one that I would say yes, this one is real. That would be the one. So you. So you. So. So what do you, what do you think um, after you did your research and you've sat down and wrote this book and visited, like, what do you think was going on in Point Pleasant? Well, I don't really know because on the surface, the Mothman sounds too surreal to be real itself. Um, but with how many people saw something and how genuine they all were, they, they must have been seeing something odd. And I know there's, there's 
they try to make the case out for like maybe it was a a, a was it a barn owl that they, yeah. they like to a say i think it's a barred owl right a barred owl that's right and a sandhill crane they they make cases for that but i think the majority of people would be able to tell the difference between an owl and a crane and then something so large and terrifying and if it was one person who made that mistake that's one thing but there's a lot of people who claim to see the same thing so they must have been seeing something i don't know personally um i i think it's more exciting to leave it up to your imagination so so are you what so well, okay so let me ask you do you know right offhand how many people claim to have an experience with the with the mothman i claim to i don't have the any numbers like that offhand right now but i mean there were there were quite a few of the reports within that year from the first sighting which i think was if i recall it was some high schoolers that say that it chased them down a street in their car yeah um and then you know a lot a lot of more a lot of reportings came after that over the next year and then after the bridge collapsed i don't know if it was maybe just you know the bridge collapsing was such a devastating thing that nobody had time to think about the mothman anymore so maybe they weren't they had bigger things (laughs) on their plate at that point obviously um or or was it just gone after that i don't know so now i mean i we kind of talked about this a little bit did you get did you get into any of the possible ufo uh connection to to mothman like that was that was tied into the story like uh, what people yeah. believe i know that there were a lot of ufo sightings in point pleasant and around point pleasant during that time period um so there you know there could always be a connection made with maybe it was something from space um um you had an interesting area. yeah yeah and i <laughs> well i have an interesting I have an, I don't know if it's an interesting theory, but uh, <laughs> I I threw this out one time to because uh, um, I I think I told you you're you know we've had a, you're about the second guest we've had to talk about Mothman okay and mm-hmm. so we were you know the first guest I kind of threw this out and I think he thought I was crazy but um, he was a good sport about it but I kind of thought because at the time. There was a character that was tied to the Mothman called his name. They called him Indrid Cold, and he made two or three different appearances to people that had um, something to do with the stories. Be uh, I think they all had. I think they were all part of uh, the stories being run in the newspaper about Mm -hmm. the Mothman. And in fact, one of them. One of the stories was is that um, one of the guys was driving on the highway and came up over a hill and there was a spacecraft in the middle of the highway and he had to stop and here was this um, being who, introdu- who introduced himself as Indrid Cold and just basically said, hey, you know, please, you know, forget about what's going on. There's no need to report about it in the paper. You know, just let it go. It'll go away. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> which in and of itself, I look, I don't know about you, but I'm weary of a guy that's driving a spacecraft and decides to park it in the middle of the freeway. That oh, just yeah. seems a little suspicious. But, <laughs> but because this, um, the, this UFO kind of alien tie in was, I kind of jokingly said, you know, what, what about if you're an interstellar traveler and uh, just like anybody driving on the freeway, you got to make a pit stop, right? You know, you right. got to stop, you got to go to the bathroom, grab, 
a pop, grab some chips or whatever. And if you got a pet with you, you got to let the pet out. The pet's got to go to the bathroom, got to stretch its legs and stuff. So what happens if, if some of these cryptids that we see are interstellar pets, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like, uh, Mr. And, uh, Mrs. Uh, you know, uh, gray from, from the <laughs> outer reaches of, you know, they, they got their Mothman pet with them and they stop because they're like, Oh, we're going to, we, we need to refuel, you know, we need to find some diamonds or something for our flux <laughs> capacitor. And, um, and as soon as they open the door, the Mothman, he's just out. Yeah. He's just out the door. There's no catching him. They didn't have him on a leash. You know, he's oh. flying around. There's no catch. You know, what, what are you going to do? You, you're on a planet. You're trying to stay hidden. You got to wait for the for the thing to come back. Yeah, and no, they they should have had a leash on him. He caused a lot of trouble down there. Exactly. <laughs> and, and as silly as it kind of was, I sat back and I'm like, you know what? Why could that not be? Why could that not be the case? Because there is a tie. I mean, there is a seemingly a connection between especially now bigfoot you know we're really hearing this a lot that there's you know people are seeing these orbs or these small balls of light that seem to be uh moving intelligently okay they're not just flakes of you know whatever or people see ufos and then a bigfoot appears so why is it a stretch of the imagination that some of these things are are their version of a pet, of an animal, of something that they didn't intend to be get get loose, okay? And maybe, right. no, and maybe I mean, the, that... yeah, and maybe this pet, maybe the boss man, oh, he finally did it. He he screwed <laughs> up the bridge, you know. And he's <laughs> right. Like, oh no, you know, you go, you know, and, because what would have, what would that kind of being do if he came across four kids in a car out? You know, were those kids out by that TNT place? They, the place they yeah. called it. Was, okay. Yep. So, so what do you think that thing would do if it saw four beings it's never seen before? It'd chase after them, you know? Right. Especially Follow. if they're in a car. Yeah. It probably had <laughs> never seen a car, never seen a human being. And it's just fun to get a closer look. Like, hey, kids, I'm just trying to play here. I'm just trying to, you know, hang out, right. have some fun. And, Next thing you know, it's mass hysteria, you know. Yeah. But but the any other story that I mentioned to you was another guest on here that we've had a couple times is author Mark Muncy uh, from Florida, who was who was doing a story about a UFO event that happened in Florida. Um, and I can't. I think this event happened in the late fifties, early sixties. There was somebody that. Uh, was a pro uh, a well-known person down in Florida now came forward to uh, Mark and said, Hey, look, I got this. I got this, I was part of this UFO story that is very seldom reported. And I think it was in the late fifties, early sixties where this school, a bunch, they had a, they, there was a big UFO. There was a UFO sighting by many students at this. I believe it was a school. Okay. And so this gentleman that came forward to Mark said, I was one of those kids that witnessed this. And let me tell you what happened. And so he tells Mark that as a kid, three men came to his house to interview him and that his parents took notes. They, I, I don't know what they did, but they were the kind of parents that, um, you know, wrote everything down so that they, you know, had a trail, paper trail or whatever. And so they, they wrote down, I think a guy was from the army, a guy was from maybe the Navy, and then there was somebody from the air force and they wrote down the name of each officer and described them. Okay. So that there would be two ways of identifying these. Well, the air force person, I believe is how they, 
his they described him, you know, wearing like the shiny metallic <laughs> kind of suits. <laughs> like he didn't have like a three piece suit on, but he had kind of a weird suit. But his skin and his expression and stuff not only looked like what Indrid Cold was described as by the people during the Mothman, um, t- times of the Mothman, but that his name he gave was also Cold. And when Mark got that information, it blew his mind because the Indrid Cold, like you can Google it and it comes up on, you know, Wik- Wikipedia. I mean, you can find stories about Ingrid Cold. And, but the, you just thought, man, is that, is that just another part of the hysteria? Did somebody make that up or somebody, you know, whatever. Well, here is a totally independent, um, notes from before, I think the Mothman stuff happened. About right. a about a somebody who looks like Ingrid Cold and uses the name Cold Cold mm-hmm. and is there investigating a UFO sighting um, on behalf of the United States government. And the point that we kind of said was, um, no matter no matter when it happened, I mean, they still wouldn't have known anything about Ingrid Cold one way or the other. The people in Point Pleasant, if that happened after, they would have no way of knowing who Ingrid Cold was, and vice versa. They just wouldn't know. The stories, even though they're part of the uh, um, legend of, of some of the stuff that went on, they're not the bigger part of the story. You know, the bigger part of the story is the Mothman, and then the bigger part of the story is this UFO being seen by all these kids. You know, that little tidbit is such a small, random tidbit for it to match up really makes you sit back and go whoa like yeah there what is real what is real what really happened you know? there's so many crazy things involved and you never know what's gonna connect to something else and that's why it that's why it all remains such a mystery all this stuff it, now did you actually talk to anybody that was connected to the Mothman stuff for this book, or did you just kind of go through your research and then uh, create, you know, obviously you created the rest of the story because from, from what I've read, I don't remember (laughs) that stuff happening. (laughs) And if it had, it'd be much bigger news. Yeah. No, no, I did not. I did not uh, talk to anybody um, that was ever involved with with the whole story, I, uh, I I set out to create uh, a fictional horror story based around the events. Um, I I definitely, um, you know, toss some uh, some callbacks out though. There there are a few names in there that people who who know the case well or know the investigation well will will be able to pick up on. Um, uh, I I tried to also capture the small town close knit vibe that I witnessed when I was there. Um, just a, a community where, where everybody is so willing to help one another and uh, seems like everybody knows each other. Um, so no, I did not, I, I did not speak to anybody that was, that was involved. Um, most, most of the book is, is fictional. Well, I would, I would str- like after you know what I've read to this point, and uh, and yes, I'll keep reading the rest of it um, because because <laughs> I I got to see what happens. Is I mean I'm really I'm really like looking forward to the next time I can drive into Point Pleasant and kind of find some of these places that are in the book, you know, and kind of like okay, I see because. I, I got to think that that uh, some of the streets are probably pretty accurate. Yes. No. Yeah, I was uh, going off of uh, of of my experience there. So a lot of the the ways I've described 
um, the locations in the book are how I remember them when I was there. Um, like Main Street, um, I think I had mentioned the the famous statue. Yep. Um, the 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 river, obviously the TNT plant. Um, I, I tried to describe them all how I remembered them. Now, did you and your brother travel out to that TNT plant? We did. Uh, we couldn't find it that because at the there they have that Mothman museum there. So when we were in there, we were able to get a map that told us where some of these places were, and we just we couldn't we couldn't find them. So it was it was like the next morning when before we had left home, we're like, well, let's go give it one more look. And we were finally able to track down some of these, um, they call them igloos. The, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those little, those old, um, ammunition bunkers. And, uh, th- they were always widely considered that whole area is widely considered to be where the Mothman kind of hangs out. It's this like little home or something. So, uh, no, we were finally able to find those, and they are definitely as creepy as you hear. They're just, they're pitch black. There's just no light at all inside of them. And they're, it's just surrounded by this, like, overgrowth. And this but this was back in the mid, mid-2000s, mid so, I mean, maybe it's changed a little bit since then. But I, I wrote it, um, my descriptions are how I remember it. So I tried to capture as much of the atmosphere as I could. Well, I listen, I've seen shows on that. Um, and I think I saw one where they went out where they had been, uh, they were underwater or something and it had flooded. Mm. And I'm just thinking, you got to be, you've got to be crazy to go. I mean, when you were out there, did it just, did it feel creepy out there? Is it just downtown? Yeah, it was, it did feel kind of creepy. It was, it was not very busy down there, kind of just like when you described it. Um, that there were, a, we did see a couple other people walking around the the TNT area, um, probably just tourists like like we were. Um, see, that would yet- freak that would freak me out even more. <laughs> okay, that you're going out somewhere that's supposed to be deserted and isolated, and there's just some other people walking around out there. I don't know. Yeah. That- <laughs> Like maybe in theory that's supposed to be comforting, but I'm not sure that that that, that yeah. would. I mean, I remember walking. We walked. There were these fields and tr- these trees on either side. It was almost like a giant like aisle. Um, and then it, it was it was I think it was during the summer because I remember it was hot. Um, so it was kind of muggy and we were sweating and all you could hear were just like the bugs and the crickets and stuff throughout the, the the tall grass and the trees and then you finally kind of we stumbled upon those couple of those igloos and um yeah no it was it was definitely <laughs> an eerie feeling but i would i would love to to do it again so you've completely lost your mind is that what you told absolutely me? yep you've worked at the post office <laughs> way too long way too long um so now I did. Now you did tell me, uh, you know, kind of an interesting something that did happen to you while you were down there. Yeah. Yep. And this fits perfectly with your show too. And it, it <laughs> might seem contrived given the the topic we're talking about, but it, it is one hundred percent true. Um, when we went down there, we stayed at the Low Hotel. Um, which is on Main Street, I believe, right across the street from the the statue. Um, and it was a very old, it was a historical landmark. You could tell that just by being inside of it. Um, but we, during the night, we shared a, a room. And during the night, we were woken up on two different occasions by, now I, I checked with my brother today. He describes it a little differently than I do. Um, I heard a loud banging noise on the outside of our window. And we were on the we were on the third floor, I believe. 
maybe second or third. Um, but it was loud banging on the outside of our window. I thought it sounded like a gutter that had come loose and was slamming against the window. Um, my brother describes it as two metal um, pieces of metal clanging against each other outside the window. Um, and then, like I said, it, it, it happened twice throughout the night. So the next morning we went, uh, when we, we were heading out, um, we looked up at our window to see if the gutter was hanging off and there was no gutter. It was just a flat brick wall with just our, the windows. So there was nothing at all that would have been, um, banging there. Um, and then when we got back home, I looked into the motel or the hotel online and discovered it was supposedly a very haunted hotel. So that is the the story we like to tell from there is how we experience some of the supernatural um, things that the low hotel has to offer while looking at Mothman stuff. <laughs> so, and I'm just going to throw this out there is sure. three stories up. What if it's the Mothman and he's ba- and he's banging against the, he's banging against the window? <laughs> I mean, and that's what that's what really like when you were telling me that story. The, that's the part that impressed me is that you didn't freak out. Okay, you're just like okay, I'm gonna go and look and see and find a logical explanation for this. Mm-hmm. And there was no logical explanation that you could see. You know, like I still don't understand. I mean, you're saying a gutter, your brother's saying two pieces of metal banging against each other. It doesn't matter what it is. If there's no gutter, um, what's banging? What's banging out there? Exactly. And like I said, at, when it was happening, we didn't know about the the haunted history that the hotel had. So that's not anything that ever crossed our mind. We just pass it off as uh you know the gutter or 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 something um and then when we saw the next morning that there was absolutely nothing anywhere close to the window that would have done that we just like well that was just really weird and which made us <laughs> take a look a little further when we got home and then when it says it was haunted we're like oh well that explains it <laughs> you, you know i'd love i'd love to talk to some some more people and maybe even the owners of the little hotel and kind of get a lowdown of what goes on there and you know what what do they think is haunting the place you know because yeah. i can tell it's got to be i mean it's probably totally not related to the um, um mothman however I, did something happen when the bridge collapsed was there um you know, did I, they did they take injured people there? Did, you know, was there somebody that was staying there trying to get back to the low hotel that passed away? I don't know. I wonder. You know, that's. I know it's the the Point Pleasant has the the classic um, Indian burial ground thing going on because yes. there was um, a lot of uh, some of the wars and stuff that took place there. A lot of people were killed. Um, that could also always play a part in the the area too and and that, that's one thing i tried to do with the book uh I, I wanted to give without forcing it i wanted to give numerous explanations as to what the mothman is or could be um and how and how everybody kind of thinks it as being something different so no matter what side of things you fall on um that it's the book kind of offers up a little, a, you know, everything is, is could be a possibility. Well, and I and I I heard this uh, I heard this at some point um, when I was uh, starting my right you know my writing career if you I mean I'm using air quotes career if uh, but uh, that if you can imagine it. So if, if the human brain can imagine something, a scenario or an event, it's pr- it is probably happened. 
mm-hmm. or can happen. Like if if it's something that we can dream up or imagine, then then it's possible, you know, mm-hmm. um, which only makes sense. I mean, you can only you can only dream or, or imagine stuff that, you know, probably within reason. I mean, you can. You know, think of something crazy, but it's always tied into something plausible. And, right. and so, you know, I th- I think that everybody, I think everybody's right. You know what I'm saying? I think everybody, yeah. in, especially in this case, in this cryptid, I think everybody, almost everybody is has a right to claim, like, I know what it is. Because I think there's so many different things it could be, and they all make they all make sense. As crazy as as it would have sounded 50 years ago to say that's an alien or a pet of an, we we now know that spaceships and UFOs exist. Our government tells us we have them. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, you know a lot of people don't believe in anything the government says, but you know I mean right. something we something we got to hold on to right let's let's at yeah. least make it something fun ufos let's right. make it, let's make it fun <laughs> if anything so, else it, it it gives for a very interesting conversation yeah it it does because it is it's it's something like and i'm like you when i grew up as i was growing up i was so fascinated by the unknown and you know what people thought you know cuz i grew up in the 70s as a kid. So that's only 20 years removed from like Roswell. Mm -hmm. Okay. So think back what was happening 20 years ago from today. It doesn't seem that long ago. So in the seventies, people were still talking about Roswell and what happened to those alien bodies and, um, or 30, it was 30 years. Right. Right. Cause Roswell was like in the late forties, 47. 47. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so, so yeah, think about what happened 30 years ago. I mean, it, I was in high school. Golly, did I just say that out loud? I was in high school. There. But I mean, it still it does. It seems like yesterday. So I can see why, uh, you know, when I was that age, and I'm talking to my grandparents and my parents, and they're like, you know, they're fascinated by what happened then, and and to think that we're just now sort of getting some answers about it Mm -hmm. and so so like at what at what point in time are we going to get some answers about the mothman i'll be ready for some answers it's it does it is and i'm i'm curious to um to hear from our listeners like what they think about this subject like because um we do on our instagram page we do like a, a mothman monday it is one of the most popular things we do. There's so many Mothman things out there. Right. And in fact, that's how I came across you as our social media person's like, um, Hey, you got to check this guy out. He wrote a book, a cool book on the Mothman. And, uh, and so I just, I, I just, this is one of those where I just want to hear. I do. I want to hear from some listeners and some people and say, you know, tell me what, what do you think the Mothman is, was, is it is he coming back? Is he you know? Do you one hundred percent agree that he's just a pet of of Mister <laughs> Mrs Gray and they he got away from him or what? Um, <laughs> you know I don't know I don't know I can't I can't wrap my head around but I but I do I, I will say I I strongly encourage anybody who who loves the cryptid aspect and loves the horror uh, fiction stuff. They got to get they got to get your book because it's good. It's fun to read about something that so many, you know, so many people really believe in. You know right. what I'm saying? Like a lot yeah. of horror fiction. It's it's something that is just taken from somebody's imagination. It's taken from, you know, something ancient or what. You know what I'm saying? This is like mm-hmm. an actual like entity in there that that people went to the police and said they saw you know and mm-hmm. um, and i find yeah. it I, I find it interesting uh, on especially the first part of that is is how the the police interact with some of the uh 
with some of the people, <laughs> you know, all those right. years, all those years later, you know, still it's like, yeah, right. You, yeah. Okay. You, okay. Like, yeah, this is the epicenter of something flying around with red eyes and still they're doubting what people are saying. <laughs> they're doubting right. what people are saying. So I, I just, I, I like that. I find that, um, I find that really cool that you, yeah, find that. For 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 some of the characters, Mothman is just a, a common knowledge in in their in the town, and then mm -hmm. other characters are the people who didn't believe and say, "No, it had to have been something else. There's nothing going on here." And then and then something goes on. So, <laughs> well, you know, Scott, I don't think we solved anything when it came to the Mothman in this episode. We, we didn't. We didn't. We nope. didn't. We didn't solve anything, and I don't, I don't know that. We, I don't know, but I do, I do know there's a lot of cool stuff for everybody to go out and you know, please go out and research all the stuff about the Mothman. Research Ingrid Cold. Uh, check out Mark Muncy's book. Um, I think it's out now where he has that story in, and definitely go find let's tell them where they can go find your book mothman return because and you've got a lot of other books too do you want to give a plug to those books and and, and uh... yeah sure no I, I i write uh mostly in the horror uh horror realm um i've written a couple murder mystery slashers um one of them called cheater cheaters actually being developed into an indie film Ooh, currently. yeah like currently that. so um and then uh, I wrote a, a gothic horror tale called Of a Mad Brain. Um, that one might really mess with your head a little bit. Um, yeah, no, I just did. I, I, I like to write things that I would just want to sit down and just relax and read. So there, a lot of them go down pretty easy and, and are, are fun and that a lot of them play out like little movies. So, um, Definitely, definitely check them out. Yeah, I, I that's what I kept thinking as I was reading this. I'm like, boy, I wonder if this would make a good movie, you know? <laughs> so I'm wait, I'm waiting to get to the end before I pass pass judgment on whether right. I think it's a good movie. So, so tell everybody where they can go find your books. Um, you can go to Amazon. Um, I got my. Um, they're all on there. Um. So you can get them there, and um, I also occasionally order um, uh, copies to have here if people request um, signed copies. So if if that's something somebody's interested in, just find me on social media and send me a message. Um, otherwise, Amazon, I, uh, my books are on Kindle, Kindle Unlimited, and paperback. Um, and it, you know, being a fellow mailman, it really pains me. To, to encourage anybody to go to Amazon and buy anything because, <laughs> it's, but right. Hey, Hey, go to Amazon and, 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 and buy, and buy these it, books. Because, it's keeping us in business too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We won't say that. That's a, right. that's a whole other podcast. That's um, true. <laughs> but yeah, I, I strongly, from what I've read so far, the moth Mothman return to point pleasant is, uh, is a really cool book. It's a really good read. Um, and I hope that, uh, I hope that not only our listeners go out and get it, I hope they uh, check out some of your other stuff. I definitely want to see, I definitely want to read liar, liar now or cheat. Wait, is that what you cheater, said? Cheater, 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 yeah. cheater, 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 yeah. cheater, liar, liar. It's the same thing. Um, <laughs> I definitely want to read that. I definitely want to read that and see how that is, um, could be developed into a movie. I, I, I really, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and if, if anybody likes uh, um, the Scream movies, um, it, it's kind of similar. It's a, uh, it's got a, it's a small town feel with a uh, a masked killer running around. Um, and uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to um, bring that to the attention of a of an indie filmmaker out in Washington, and and he loved it and wrote it into a a script, and and I believe they're supposed to start filming by the end of the month, I think. So awesome. Awesome. We'll definitely, we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. That's cool. And look, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times, 
just don't take those mailmen for granted. I mean, they're always out there grinding away, doing something cool, right? You just got to peel back, right. la- got to peel back the la- one or two layers and it's, right. it's right there. <laughs> we're, we're not all bills and catalogs. <laughs> That's <understand>. right. <laughs> That's right. So keep your dogs chained up, please. I mean, you, you know, you never, hurt, you don't want to hurt anybody that's doing something cool. Right. So, <laughs> so but, but Scott, I, I appreciate you coming on, spending some time and, and just let's, and talking Mothman because. No, man, it was awesome. Thank you. People love the Mothman and I, I hope they found some, uh, some some jewels in this conversation that they can go and uh and and check out even further because uh, i think that's what it's all about discovery you know and, yeah uh, if, and if anybody gets a chance to visit point pleasant i strongly recommend it because it, it it might have a slightly eerie vibe to it but it is such a cool little town with such a big history um it was is still one of the most fascinating places i think i've ever visited so I would strongly recommend checking and book it out. A, and book a night in the low hotel while you're at it. Yeah, why so, not? Why yeah. not? <laughs> yeah, get a ghost story and a cryptid all at the same time. You know, one one crack. Just get well, it like, up. Like I said, it's the perfect setting for a, a, a spooky story. So. Oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm telling you. It is. It <laughs> definitely is. So, well, Scott, hey, I appreciate it. And we will uh, we'll be... A, We'll stay in touch because I, I can't wait to I can't wait to uh, see what else you come up with. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of the From the Shadows podcast. Until next time, never shy away from the darkness or what may be lurking in the shadows. We are out. <laughs> When it's time for an adventure on the open highway, one quick call to American Family Insurance gets you headed in the right direction. Our travel peace of mind package is there if you encounter a bump in the road. From roadside assistance to rental car coverage, we have you covered. Find a local agent or get a quote at amfam.com. American Family Insurance. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin.